On this episode, are we doing difficult things? It's not brain surgery, you know what I'm saying. But does that mean it works? No. Now only one thing can salvage this project. Chunky boy! Mmm, apples of Chola. Hi everybody, this is Christian. It's very hot. But still, we're doing the advanced map tutorial. Hey everybody, Christian from my future again. Again, uh, in this episode, the audio came out a little bit soft. I made a small mistake. Uh, it's still perfectly audible, but it is a bit softer than usual. I will try to fix this in the future. Just giving you a little bit of heads up, so you're not surprised. A load coach map. Yes, indeed. So, um, last time around, we did a, a serious revamp to our animation system. The animation system has been revamped. We did some major changes. Today we want to... Uh... Forgot to plug in the, <laughs> the light. Uh, today what we want to do is we want to um, create the animation library and we also want to maybe create like a little editor so we can edit those animations easily. Let's see how far we're gonna get. Um, so with the animation library, it's not that hard. And we did set it up as a as a, a doggy zone, but actually, again, it's it's really not like it's not brain surgery. You know what I'm saying? Um, all that we need to do basically is we need to take all of all of these um, uh, these arrays, and we're gonna put them into a text file. So it's gonna be just another include like here, right? So let's just start and doing this. We're gonna go include shmup underscore, let's call, call it anilib, anilibrary, that's txt, right? <laughs> there we go, save. Um, uh, now I want to actually create that, fi that file. Right, so uh, let's get, just go like new x document uh, shmup underscore anilib. I'm gonna open it. By the way, if you are wondering, this program that I'm always using is called um, uh, it's called Notepad++. It's a very good text editor that I thoroughly recommend if, whenever you're using because it's like way more capable than the traditional text editor in, that is built into Windows. And also, um, you can actually almost use it to code in it as well. Like some people use just code in, in, in this editor. Right, so what are we putting into this Anilib text file? Let's just immediately import some stuff in here. Um, so, like so, okay. So I just want to just, let's go anilib. Hmm, let's go anilib and, and like this, right? Uh, no, anilib is equal split 2D in this. Like this, right? Uh, I just want to, um, have an empty array in the anilib. Save. Okay, okay. And then here in in this, and we're gonna copy our editor. This is our default vanilla editor, our <laughs> Excel editor. We're gonna do a copy of that. And we're gonna call this anilib. Okay, so this is gonna be our animation editor. Okay, we're gonna save this. By the way, if I, can I run this? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't doesn't create any errors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this open. Maybe the any file. Okay, I'm gonna go load any uh, any edit. Um, okay, so here we need to do some changes. Um, for example, here we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna include the any lib file. Uh, we're gonna save into the any lib file. Uh, the array name and name is gonna be any lib. And data is going to be any lib, right? Right. Save, run. Good. So now we see that there is just no, no entries in here. There's just no entries. It's just like an empty, empty, uh, empty database. So now the the goal is to get all of these animations we already have in the, in Pico Eight that we want to get those into this database. By the way, that's that's just like. Oh weird! I cannot I cannot edit the first entry. Weird. 
uh, 66. And I'm going to export. Sorry that I cannot uh, edit the first entry. Let's see what, what it exported. How does that look like? Yeah, reload this piece. Oh yeah, okay. So I think there's like a nil entry here. Let's fix this real quick. I'm gonna save this. Let's run this. Okay, that's better. That's actually what I wanted. Funny. Okay, so I have written down some notes on the animations that we already have in our game, uh, in our program, and I'm just gonna bring them into our into this editor real quick. All right, so this is it. Um, so now I'm gonna export this real quick, just make sure. Uh, okay, so this first one is the flame animation. That's the um, jet flames going going down. Um, this is the muzzle flash. Um, this is the shot. Um, this is the splash animation. This is um, the enemy. Um, the enemy animation, and this one is just like it's just like a little throwaway thing. That's the single frame of the bullet, of the enemy bullet. Um, so now we have like all of the animations. That's I think most of the animations we already have in the game. If we miss one, we're gonna add them later on. We already see kind of like a bit of a problem here and that is that um, there is, it, it's, it would be nice if in this, in this editor, we could write down like do notes of which animation is which or maybe see like a preview of, of the animations in this editor. Um, I'm not going to do it right now, but maybe later on when we have more animations and we're really starting to lose an idea of what is what, then we can still add it later on. But for now, I want to move on and I want to implement this in our actual game. So instead, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to write down what animation is what in this little file. And then we can use this file as a reference later on uh, like this, right? Like so. I'm gonna save this. I'm just gonna save it into notes. Right, back into Kaushmap, run this. Nothing changed. Uh, we should have an animation lib, um, an animation lib uh, array now here. So we can just see if this just works. <laughs> um, so let us try, let us try. Yeah, let us go into draw function here. Um, here, flame, right? We go any lib uh, one. Yeah, and you can see now the little little flames, the jet flames, are actually by, driven by an animation library. And you can tell because we can just remove this. And it still works. Okay, so let us make the other things also work that with the animation lib. Um, so for example, when we do the shot here, um, instead of the shot R, we can do anim any lib uh, three. Here, the mass R, we can do any lib uh, two. Any lib two. Uh, any lib like this. Let's run this. Yeah, still works. The shots are now being driven by animation lib. Let's con uh, complete this this whole thing. Let's do it in the here in the, in the enemy as well. So this is enemy. This is number five. Ah, this is going to be number six. And in the update function where we do the splash. Um, that is going to be any lib uh, four. Now we can remove this and this. Let's run this. And it just still works. It just still works. Now there is an argument here to be made. There is an argument to be made that Maybe instead of saving like an entire array, because it's like always like three tokens every time we assign an array to the animation property, we could just uh, um, you know save us some tokens and just put the number of the animation library in here. And then uh, when we do the cycle or even like a draw, 
um, draw OBJ function, then we can grab the animation lib on, on that step. The reason why I'm kind of like, um, I do not want quite want to do that is I want to have the freedom to be able to just like drop in my own custom array in here. Uh, but that might be something that we're going to do in the future. I have to say that, that this might be a, there might be a good argument to do that in the future. And I'm going to write this as small things, as one of the small things. Um, any lib in draw obj. Right, so the idea is that we're going to just save the index of the animation library. And then here in the obj, we're not getting the animation array from the object of the of the thing that we're drawing, but instead we're getting the index of the library of the enemy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, by the way, I just realized uh, in the spawn enemy function, we can remove the SI here probably. Yeah, because we're just using the, let's see, let us look generally for, S, for SI. Uh, we don't need that for bullets. Uh, that's enemy bullets, right? We don't need that here. Uh, we, but we do age, we do need age. Uh, let's continue. Yeah, okay, that's it. <clears throat> okay, good, 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 good. Now, this is a bit of a weird because it's kind of like didn't, it take no, took no time at all, right, to get the, the, <clears throat> the animations going. So I kind of like inclined to go one step further. So let's see what else we have. We do need to find out, it's kind of like done. The animation system is done. <laughs> it wasn't such a big deal after all, right? Um, we need to figure out the collision system and we need to figure out the enemy database system. So you know what? Let's just m apply the same process to the enemy, enemy database system. And on the next episode, we're gonna figure out the collision system. Um, so enemy database system. It's gonna be kind of like the same process. We're gonna take our template editor. That's why we wrote it. That's why we wrote the template editor. And we're gonna change this to n edit. Enemy edit, uh, let's call it n edit. Um, then we're gonna create also our little enemy library. So we're gonna go shmup nlib. It's gonna be our enemy library. I'm gonna open it up in my, can I, can I, ooh, can I open it here? Yes, please. Okay, I'm just gonna make it empty. I'm just gonna make it one. I'm gonna put 15 in there. Okay, something like this. Yeah, and that should be it. Let me let me put um, put this into cowshmap. So we're gonna include nlib, shmup, nlib. That's good. I'm gonna save this. Um, then we're gonna go load nlib. Oh, we're gonna load n edit. Load. Right, and so here we have to customize this. So we're gonna go shmup and lib for enemy lib. Uh, shmup and lib. Uh, array name is gonna be n lib. Data is gonna be n lib. Like this. We're gonna save this. And I noticed something here in our in our first n lib entry. We actually have to change the any lib to n lib. N lib like this. We're gonna save this. Right, let's save, run. And yeah, there's our 15. That was kind of like our default entry here, right? Right, so now I'm back in our cow map. And I, what I want to do now, let me, let me put it. Um, I want to write down possible enemy data. What kind of data do we need about that we want to des describe enemies with? Um, let's just looking through all the stuff that we have here. So we do definitely want to have saved animation. Uh, we definitely want to save the animation speed. We want to save um, uh, 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 brain. And we want to save HP. That These are kind of like basic things that we want to think about. So yeah, four pieces of data. Later on, we maybe have gonna have more. Maybe we're gonna have, for example, the collision box and so forth and maybe some other things, but for now, I think four pieces of data are a good start. Right, so here in an edit, we're gonna create one enemy and that is gonna be the animation first. So that's gonna be number five. Ah, uh, the animation speed, I think we set it to six. Um, then the brain is gonna be number one and HP, let's go uh, 
let's go 5,000. Okay, now here's one of the things I want to maybe edit, uh, change this editor a little bit because I don't like how these are just like these raw numbers. I might forget what the numbers do and say. So it might be nice to have like, a, uh, again, like with a, with a one here, like the one at the very left edge, I want to maybe create a row of captions so that each individual line here has like a caption so I know what it is. So I'm gonna go in here in the, yeah, yeah, okay, here it is, here it is, refresh table, there we go. Um, so I want to go, let's create a um, local caps, the captions. Uh, I wanna create an area of captions. And it's gonna be something like, so the first is gonna be Ani, then uh, SP, uh, animation speed, it's going to be like three letter captions. There's going to be a bit, a bit of a <laughs> bit of a BRN brain and uh, HP uh, like this. Okay, and so we're going to now loop through this. So we're going to go for I equals one up equals one hashtag caps do and we're going to add these white bars. Um, we're going to go local LNE. We're going to create a new array. That's going to be the, the line that we're talking about. Oh, and the first line is going to be just nothing. Um, because it's the, it's the column with the numbers um, of the individual lines in here. You will see in a second. Um, okay, so we're creating an empty array. We're adding to the line of this text. The text is going to be uh, caps I, uh, this is good, uh, command, command is nothing, okay. okay, and then at the end we're adding that, that whole thing to the menu over here. Mm -hmm. So this should add the captions uh, on the top, let's see if this works. No, it did not work. What a what a crazy thing that just happened there. <laughs> oh yeah, I think the X and Y position, that's the problem. So um, X is gonna be, see, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So X is gonna be a four, let's, let's, let's use this, this code here. This code, we're gonna put in here. And this is just gonna be four. There's no J, right, uh, instead of we're gonna do I. Okay, this is almost good, this is almost good, but not quite. Um, so here, we have to shift everything by one, so we're gonna go I plus one. So we're gonna shift everything downwards uh, here as well. So all of this stuff that we had is just shifted one, one downwards. And it didn't quite work. This here as well. Um, okay, starting to look better. Starting to look slightly better. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is good. Now we have to shift everything a little bit to the left. Um, so like this. See. Now it's starting to, to look correct. Now just like the selection is at the wrong spot. So actually I want to set cursor X and cursor Y to two, two. Right, like this. Okay, and then in the update function, I want to make it so that I cannot select that upper row with the captions. Um, so yeah, so like here, plus two. Two, let's try that. Um, did not quite work. Let's try that again. Yeah, okay, that, that worked. Um, uh, just like this, this plus thing doesn't, doesn't really work the, when we to add an ad additional entry. Let's see where that, that was, new cell, that is here. So if J equals data plus two, I think. Nope. I plus one. Nope. Minus one? No. Ah, no, it's here. It's nine. 
Ah, there we go. There we go. I um, car y minus one. Yeah. Okay. This is good. This is good. This now works exactly the way. So now you see like the captions over over there, and I can actually add our first enemy in here, right? So again, we're gonna get. Um, so what is was the the animation of the enemy? That was five. Six, um, uh, the brain was one, and the HP. Well, I guess it said set to five five thousand, but it kind of like went out of bounds. So let's set to five hundred. Let's export this, and now we have the enemy still in here. That's good. Let us bring in the second enemy. We remember at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of episode thirty five, we uh, introduced like this big enemy, and I want to maybe introduce this big enemy. So I think this um, and the sprite of that enemy was twenty seven, but now we're not adding the sprite. We're adding an animation that we haven't created that animation yet. And we're going to set it to seven and animation uh, speed is going to be one. Uh, the brain is going to be set to true. We don't, we haven't defined that brain yet. And again, uh, the, I'm going to set nine, 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 the, the health. So this is going to be like this big chunky enemy. So I want to be able to spawn two different types of enemies. I'm going to export this. Now in this animation editor, I will actually create uh, the animation for this this enemy. That's going to be just like the frame twenty seven, and I'm going to write this down in our in our little note file. Enemy, big enemy. Uh, that's animation number seven. That was the one that we referenced in the animation data. We're going to export this as well. Now I'm going to load the couch map. Uh, so far, nothing has changed. But now, when we're creating an enemy, spawn n, I want to be able to spawn a specific enemy, right? Um, so yeah, let's let's just let's rewrite this so we can spawn specific enemies. By the way, where are we actually doing this? Spawn n. Uh, we only have this function once. So let's just rewrite this function so it spawns in a specific enemy at a specific position. So we're going to spawn enemy number one uh, at position number 6424. Okay, sure. 6424, right? This will this will spawn an enemy at this uh, of this type at this position. All right. So here in spawn n, we're gonna go uh, n i in enemy index, n x n y, uh, n x n y gets just dumped straight into the x and y position of that enemy. Uh, actually, let's keep this around. Uh, the animation, now we can grab all these data from the enemy. We can grab that from the animation library, right? So, <laughs> anilib, nlib, square brackets. Actually, you know what? Let's go uh, local n. Uh, we're going to call this n. We're going to grab that enemy object from the enemy library. So, nlib, square brackets, ne. Right, uh, and now we can go n n and uh, what was the animation? That was just one. That's entry number one. So entry number one in our n enemy array contains the number of the animation from the animation library. You can see how these systems are like built on top of each other, right? Uh, animation speed is some the second entry. Uh, S, X, and Y is okay. Animation, br uh, the, the brain, that is going to be the entry number three. And the HP is going to be uh, entry number four. Right, so we're grabbing all the information from the different uh, libraries that we have to spawn the enemy. Uh, we're not going to spawn the bullet. Or actually, we're going to comment out the bullet. We're going to think about bullets later on. And there it is. Now this enemy is actually moving now because it actually spawns with the enemy brain, right? We have like this brain set up here, um, and that is kind of like what the, what this uh, this enemy is doing right now. Uh, let's try a second enemy. Let's try now to spawn this new enemy that I was talking about. Just to remind you, um, we're talking about this chunky boy here that we created. Um, spawn n two. Chunky boy, welcome to the crew. Ah, yes, and this works so well. Oh, 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 suddenly this game comes to life. The system work. Ah, oh, isn't that the best? And it also looks really good. Like the collision system is, the uh, collision detection is actually not bad. 
It's actually not bad. I, I'm kind of shocked because this is kind of like a chunky enemy. I would have expected it to be the collision to be um, not quite right, but actually it's, it's good. Right, so now we have created a system for enemies and a system for animations. We created editors for the animations. You know what? This, uh, this episode went so well. Let's just move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Right, so we created an enemy database system. It's actually basically done. So the next episode, we're going to move to the collision system. But before we do, I'm going to put something in the doggy zone that I think you should, I should work with. You see me a little bit rushing through, you know, tweaking the, um, the editor for the, anime, for the enemy library. I want you in a doggy zone, sit down and customize the animation library editor and the enemy library editor. I think these are two things that can use some polish. I didn't do it myself right now. Maybe I'm going to do it later on, but I want you to go ahead and try it yourself. So for example, it would be nice in an animation editor to have a preview of the animation, to actually see the animation running as you edit this. That would be cool. It would be also cool in the uh, enemy editor, in the enemy library editor, to maybe see the enemy that you're editing. So you can like, you not just see like this row of numbers, but actually the enemy that you're editing these would be useful things to have. I want you to give it a go. But also another thing for the dog is that I want you to try is also to add a new enemy and a new animation, just to go through the motions of using the tools. So maybe add, you know, a visual sprite, something I will probably do at some point is I'm just gonna uh, change the colors of these UFOs and just add a couple of copies. So I want you to try this as well, adding a new sprite, adding a new sprite animation adding a new enemy to our database. Okay, for now, we're gonna move on to the part where I would say a big thank you, heartfelt thank you for supporting this show. A lot of people are supporting this show on coffee.com slash lazydevs. And if you aren't supporting the show yet, I encourage you to give it a go. It keeps the, the lights on here, even if they went out at the beginning. <laughs> coffee.com slash lazydevs. Okay, so I also want to do at this point to do another, another shout out to an incredible, incredible shmups in development, sometimes updates being posted down in uh, our uh, uh, Discord. This one is from Jamigans. So Jamigans, a uh, big, big, big person in Pico8 in our Discord as well. Jamigans has been working on this beautiful shmup, very, very different styles from the one that we saw previously. Each one of those has its own approach and I love it so much. Uh, Jamigans recently posted like a GIF of a shmup uh, that kind of looks like a, a more traditional, more, more old schooly kind of shmup, not quite as bullet helly as the other ones. Has some beautiful like retro aesthetic, retro vibes, retro feels like feels like an NES shmup, which I love so much. And has those beautiful like dark like fantasy horror background elements. With you're fighting your spaceship, but you're fighting it against bats, and you're flying above these beautiful old gardens or like cemeteries. I don't know what exactly is happening there. Jamigans posted like an update of you know, what the setting is supposed to be and it's kind of like supposed to be like a Hulu meets AI kind of thing, which is crazy to me. Yeah, I love that shmup as well. I'm following Jamigans development here. I'm looking forward to see what, what comes out out of that thing. And if you want to follow this too, then you should probably join the Discord. Yes, yes, yes. So this was, we're taking huge strides suddenly with all this setup and suddenly, you know, bam, animation system, bam, enemy system. But you know what's coming up next time around? It's gonna be the collision system. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.